functional cerebral asymmetry. There's a division of labor in the brain, and it's different for males than it is for females. On the left, you see what the XY situation looks like. So we have an area in our brains that connect the two hemispheres of the brain. This is the crosstalk area. In males, it, it is not very large. There is not a lot of crosstalk between the two hemispheres. That means that in males, the hemispheres are very specialized. If you compare that with the situation in females, there is a very uh, a robust crosstalk between the two hemispheres. There is less specialization. The hemispheres are more like each other than they are in males. Talk about some other dimorphic characteristics so that, that I don't I really don't have time to go into each and every one of these separately, so I want to do these as a group, these functional asymmetries as a group. Handedness would be another thing that you can measure. Males are, are, are the majority of left-handed people. There's a left-handedness that's a dimorphic characteristic. Spatial orientation. I always use the example that's the best for me. I can't parallel park. You know, I don't have that kind of spatial orientation. I just have to keep circling the block until I find one of those diagonal spaces. Okay? Whereas males have better spatial orientation than females do. Synonym fluency and category fluency are the way we use language. Females are better than that than males are. These autoacoustic emissions that I mentioned earlier, there are differences. You can have measurable differences in the way that your inner ear responds. Prepulse inhibitions, again, the blinking response. And even our EEG patterns are different between males and females. So taking all of that into account, this is a summary of the studies that have been done looking at all of those functional cerebral asymmetries. You can see on the left that straight males are different from straight females, and I've given them different colors so it's easy to follow. If you look at the studies in which lesbians have been studied, and not all of them, the spatial orientation, those were just not done. So there are no studies in that area for, for lesbians. You can see that in the majority of cases, these studies showed that lesbians had much more of the male pattern, the straight male pattern. Whereas if you look at the gay males, the majority of those cases had more of the straight female patterns. So again, the preponderance of the evidence here goes along with and confirms our hypothesis, our model that we set forward that these characteristics we know on the left-hand side are influenced by gestational hormones, and this is good evidence that the sexual orientation is also among the characteristics that are influenced by gestational hormones.